few in there then yeah. because we saw him in all the galleries after. Oh. And it's like, oh, I remember that voice. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, remember me, I was at New Brunswick Zoo last year. Uh, yeah, I do. Wait. I knew I was looking at his face. Wait, yeah. wait. <laughs> yeah, with the wee wee wee. Right. <laughs> See you later. Take care. Wait.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are soon to begin, but all these seats over here are available as long as they are not uh, listed as reserved. Those are marked off, so if you're out there in the back and you'd like to come up and join us, please come and find this seat. We will begin momentarily. momentarily. Now presenting the Muskrat Singers all the way from Seedonsis St. Mary's First Nation. Put your hands together, cheer them on. Here we go, boys. Sing us a good song, sing us a good song, sing a crowd, sing it for the people. Oh, 
a big round of applause for Muskrat Singers Wooka. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as we call upon Dr. Elder Maggie Paul to open us our opening prayer. Oh, will the bus go up to the way? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kikwebe Sigides, the Delta of the Bedog, the Louis. Chick Nox, the Dudem. Let's get a mock at Nil. No Jay Ozzy Pine, the Genwig, you'd say Maui Malik, Ekpahog, Eliwi Tasik. Kichi will even Alex Babachim key, you not up good at and you'd Alki Quak Gichi Wigwam, and she will in a quark. No was Walterman. Babachi Manji Beno, good Pagian. Cookmason of Mosumson, which I all did, did you bend up with your old India? Cuss said we on the dip conjures, the cheap log and elk kill a walk and exit one good way, which good way on your yearly monk holiday at Kilon. Little dark a walk and edly by me, Kichi will even get you a cheap log and Cookmason of Mosumson, Pagiolidic, Chuyolidic, Naga your Pagiolidinia, Nagagas a holiday, and you'd not so get to an end, you'd get a lot as a good one gizito. Kitchen, <laughs> Which in a negma you'd get in the meat to eat it. Babachiman Gokmas and the Mosums and the which all the deed is on asnick, which copas old in Yana negma. As you wish a yagun and you'd all dark a wagon and live a miak. Kit Chivoli one gives you Kunali gives him Chidaki in some asn. Gizil one, Meshponda gives him Chidak and Skias and Skias and you'd pageant. Little gun at water, sock was bus paper scunnard. We all kill Wabit, tell Giloho, Gon Gilon. Ninagamaligal was it, Gizimil, or Lokawag, and Tankayagon and Gilon, Dan Gonewigal, the Edut Skit Kamik. Little Guwachaya, we come even, which Ousen, Pedagik, Nagal come even, Nagani Bayo, Pesesmak, as you will ask it, will all go Pagwas, Kit Chivalyon Gizil Kongism Chidaki. See what I get. What ski osnick? Kitchu Lewin Gizilkun. Gizilkum is well like Zimchitak and Edward Tolquil. What which I yell in it? What the Gwassen? Cook must send most some son nook. Which boxy Bishop Dunya need peace on Chaya we got lot the Gwassenick. Bishop Dunyud, Edlimago holiday, you kneel on. You little doctor walk to Libamiak. Would you get sweat? Which is a woolly dazzle, the egg, the end, my son, and the gut to chocolate, and the gut quality, but coke must and nook, mossums and nook, pageolitic, Naganad Wabaid, Gil Moin, Naganam Babachim on your pageon, Kitchu Lewin Gizil Kong Zim Chidak, Lata Gwassen, Gizil Kumish Monag Zim Chidak, Lagi Gwassen. Would Gigos and you'd watch we got all the day at on Negum Nedum Gigos and the Pips Nail Tia, do the Gilon, like with old Tippin. So the Gilon Gushaya old Tippin skit can make. Git the one Gizil Kongism Chidaki and Gigos and Chidak and a Wad Muskwan Chidak and a Wad Dupwan on Negwil Chidak and Upsil the Women. Gizil comes here like him Chidak in Olas Walterman. He truly won Gizil Kun. I've given thanks to all the people who have asked me to come here to open up this beautiful, beautiful ceremony, this beautiful, beautiful building that was built. I give thanks. I ask the East Direction to come here. I ask the grandmothers and grandfathers to come here to witness the ceremony, what's going on here. 
And that's where we come from. We come from the east of the Wabanaki people. I give thanks. I give thanks to, to the uh, South, ask them to come here. I've asked that little girl to bring all the children, bring all the children here to witness the ceremony, what's going on here. And the grandmothers and grandfathers that come from that direction, ask them to come here too. Then I asked the creator to bring in that north, uh, west direction, that white buffalo that sits on top of the mountains overlooking the earth, looking, 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 looking around for us. That, that uh, white buffalo was given the gift of looking after us, and that's the duty he has to look after us as long as we live on this earth. I give thanks to the creator for bringing in the west. That's why the thunder, the lightning, the rain, and the wind comes from the nighttime and the stars. And when that moon comes up tonight from the east and it's in the west, it's the harvest moon tonight. So very beautiful and powerful. I'll give thanks to the creator for sending in that direction. Then I asked the creator to bring in that direction. The north direction where the grandmothers and grandfathers live. I asked the grandmothers and grandfathers to bring that medicine, the medicine that is being looked after by the North grandmothers and grandfathers to bring that medicine here for us to use, to purify our minds, to purify our hearts, our, our spirit, and our body. You that medicine. That medicine is good medicine. And I asked the grandmothers and grandfathers to bring it. Then I asked the grandmother, asked the creator to bring our mother the earth. To bring our mother the earth she is our oldest mother. So therefore, everybody that's on this earth, we're all related. We come from the earth. We come from this world. We're all related. We're all brothers and sisters. Giving thanks to the creator for sending our mother. Then I asked the creator to bring in that beautiful sky. When we look up into that beautiful sky, we see that beautiful blue, light blue. It used to be darker blue than when I was a little girl. I give thanks the sky. Then I asked the creator to bring in that earth underneath here, to bring in that earth, and we smell that earth, it's so beautiful. Creator for bringing in that. Then I asked the creator to bring the all the way around, all the way around to bring it here. I give thanks to the creator for listening. Thanks. Check one, two. All right. We're just getting this fixed up here, ladies and gentlemen. I need to take one step back. We're competing with all this beautiful cement. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Asim. <laughs> I give thanks, Creator for bringing us all here to witness this ceremony, this beautiful building. We're going to walk in, I think. They're going to let us in. Maybe not, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I'm going to sing this song. This song I'm going to sing was the very first song that I ever sang when I first opened my eyes to doing my ceremonies again. The songs that were sung by our ancestors this was the song that I sang. And it's a very beautiful, powerful song. It's called Guanude. Guanude songs brings in our ancestors. And when we're all together here, this is the longhouse. This is the longhouse right here. The song is so very powerful. It's so beautiful. And the children love to hear this song. And we sing. 
Chief Allen. This time, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to call upon the Ormocto First Nation dancers. Come on in, all you beautiful dancers. And you may be seated at this time, ladies and gentlemen. All right, here they come with the muskrat singers performing their song. Big round of applause all the way from Wulamuktuk down river. Hooka! Space it on out, guys. Use that whole area. Hutcha. Turn those cameras on, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Hooka.
<laughs> All right. Now, while we give them a moment to go get their regalia changed, I just want to give you guys a quick background. This beautiful community has been putting this group together for the last six years, and it was a, a dream at one point in time that we would have dancers in that community. And there used to only be two, and now this last powwow that they had in their community was over 120 dancers. So big round of applause for Amokto First Nation Hoka. And we're going to turn it over to Muskrat Singers for one last song to kind of give us a nice little break in between while they're going to go get changed. They're going to come out for one more dance for you. But Muskrat Singers, ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Give it a big round of applause all the way from across the river. <laughs> representing this beautiful unceded territory on which we are here. Hookah hey. Muskrat Singers. With that, gentlemen, you are excused. Thank you so much. They have so much to do. Our beautiful drum group. This is our one of our last professional Wolostuk drum groups in our area, and we thank them so much for making the time and being out here for us. So thank you, Chiwiliwin, from all of us.
and they're off to their next uh, awesome gig. So big round of applause one more time. And as uh, you have learned about the muskrat singers, it is important to learn where their name comes from, that muskrat is our earliest elder in this area. Our people were called the muskrat people, and it was said that our muskrat singers are digging for their roots, and that's where the story comes from. Hootka. And in just a moment, the Ormukto school dancers will be back out, but I'd love to have Maggie Paul tell us about that beautiful drum when they first started in a long time ago, if she would give us a quick story. Dr. Elder Maggie Paul has recently received her doctorate from St. Thomas University for all of her contributions in this territory since the 70s. We have our drums back. She has been the teacher of Jeremy Dutcher as he's gone across our beautiful territory. Muglet, your mic is live. Oh, only one. When I hear that drum, I go back all the way back in the late 60s when we started talking about the drum. When we started talking about the drum because our people never heard it for a long, long time. The last time the drum was ever, ever heard here was 139 years ago when we began. That was 60 somewhat years ago. So we did. We got our songs from my cousin. My cousin started back on her road, on her culture, 10 years before I did. So we went and got some songs. This is where I got that Guanoda song. I got that Guanoda song from her. And the drum, our very first drum came from Oklahoma. We didn't know what kind of drum we needed. We didn't know we used hand drums and those drums, the ceremonial drums that was here a little while ago. We had one of those too. We had one made by one of our elders out west. He was an Ojibwe, Art Solomon. He was a drum maker. He said, I'll put my drum making hands down when I teach the people from the east. That was the time when I started working for the culture at home. And so we found him. And so we sent my husband and the other woman's husband and another woman, uh, it was, which was our elder, Harold uh, Laporte. Those three men went up to make the, the big drum. And so they were gifted, too, to make the, the hand drums. So they brought the drums back. And we started doing our songs again. It took a, a quite a while. But then again, we put out, we put out uh, uh, flyers to see if anybody wants to learn how to dance, learns to learn how to make your regalia. And because so of that, look at all this people. amazing dancers that she has brought here on that beautiful heritage has moved on and this is it, you see them here. That's Ooh. right. And you know who taught these? Basazam. Hey. Basazam Paul, my grandson. That's why, it, that's why when I see it, and then I said, I did, I did what I had to do to, for, for these little ones, and they're going to teach the little ones, and I know so. 75 years ago, ahead of time, my, my, my sister dreamt our language is still going strong, and our dances are still dancing. We're still feasting. We're still doing our work. Tahoe.
And a quick note as they're leaving, they, we built this choreo over this last week, and each piece talked to all the beautiful pieces that are inside this art gallery. And as you saw them lift that aguid in that beautiful grandfather canoe that's in there since our ancestors, we wanted to share that story with you. So Chiwiliwin, and on with the rest of our beautiful performance here at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery, handing it on over to the Fredericton High School Band, directed by Greg Weber. Kick it up, hooka!
Ben's only been for uh, four days, so we're doing our best here. And uh, <laughs> this is Avengers Age of Ultron, okay? This next piece was written by an alumni of the band. We met at the cheese line at the farmer's market and uh, found out that he was a composer and I was a conductor. And I said, well, you should write a piece for our band. And then two years later, we have this. Okay, so here we go. This is called Processional.
One more One time, time for the FHS Band, band. band. Oh, oh, cow. Cow. And without further ado, calling upon Paul Simmons, your master of ceremonies. Take it away. Come on up to the podium, Paul. It's all you, hookah. Hello, could we have the podium party to come up to the podium, please? Welcome everybody and good afternoon. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the recent passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II by honoring her with a moment of silence, if you'd be so kind. Thank you. My name is Paul Simmons. I'm a director of the Beaverbrook Art Gallery Board of Governors. I'd like to recognize that we are on traditional unceded land of the Woolastook and Mi'kmaq peoples, and we are stewards of this land and will pass it forward. Thank you for attending the grand opening of the Harrison McCain Pavilion. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the chairman of the Board of Governors of the Beaverbrook Out Gallery, Jamie Irving. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to be here today. When we started the Beaverbrook campaign in 2007, we were going to try and raise $16 million over five years. Our fundraising consultant in Halifax told us it was likely going to be very difficult, probably impossible. Fifteen years later, through patience and persistence, I think we've raised over $40 million for renovations, new buildings, and the endowment. And today, we're op opening what I think is the crowning achievement of the Beaverbrook campaign. This building is what we've called uh, unofficially the phase four of our campaign. And the project has been successful beyond anything we could have imagined 15 years ago. There are a few key people I'd like to thank who made it all happen. First. I'd like to thank Shirley Bloomberg and the team from KPMB. Her team has given us a remarkable building. The original gallery entrance had crumbling steps and a narrow entrance that was dated and not very inviting to the public. Our initial goal was simply to make the entrance more open and welcoming. Shirley and the team have given us so much more than that. This pavilion is a perfectly balanced design. It's refined and elegant. It has great function and utility. It's a sophisticated and contemporary design. But you know, last summer I was having dinner, my wife and I were having dinner with Shirley and her husband Scott Thornley in, uh, in Toronto. Scott's here with us today. And I was telling him at dinner how much I loved the contemporary design of the building and how excited I was. And, and Scott said, what are you talking about? It's the bloody Parthenon. <laughs> and I realized he's right. While it is a contemporary building, it's a classic and timeless design. 
it cleverly fits with the historical nature of Fredericton, and it won't become tired and dated. I think it's going to hold up really well over the years, and I think looking back 50, 50 years from now, we'll say it was absolutely the right, the right way to go. So thank you so much to Shirley, Matthew, and, and your team. I also want to mention how sad it is that Greg Cook cannot be with us here today. Uh, Greg has been a driving force for the last decade in the revitalization of the gallery. He passed away a few weeks ago after a, a difficult battle with cancer, but Greg was working on the project right up until the very end. Even in June, I was still getting calls and, and photos and emails with, with updates. I can't really stress how critical Greg was to this project. This is an extremely location, difficult location to build. It's actually a terrible site for a construction project. We're located on a floodplain. The soil is all very sandy. It was a very complex and sophisticated design. It's cramped. There's no lay down space for construction. And you know, we're obviously right across the street from the legislature, which brings its own sort of constraints. On top of that, we had you know, trade shortages and uh, supply chain problems from COVID. There are so many things that could have turned this into a catastrophic disaster. And remarkably, the building is almost exactly on time and very close to the original budget, which I think right now is just a remarkable feat. And uh, so. Given the unusual state of things back at the beginning of COVID, we were really unsure what to do. Looking back, you know, I think if we had waited or delayed, or we had anyone else managing this project, it might not have ever happened. Projects like this are getting canceled all over the place. Nova Scotia recently canceled their art gallery. It's becoming very, very difficult right now with inflation and whatnot to, 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 uh, to make these things happen. So. Uh, Anyway, Greg was a great man of faith, as many of you know, and, and I'd like to think he's here today with us in spirit, helping us to celebrate this great achievement. I also want to thank Tom Smart and the gallery staff. Despite the constant change and turmoil uh, over the last few years, and they've been going through essentially nonstop construction for the last decade, uh, they've really risen to the challenge brought forward to us, and they've done an outstanding job. I also want to thank the Board of Governors who have been unwavering in their support and their commitment to the project. And I'd like to single out uh, Dick and Beth Curry who have been a great support and a resource to me personally. They, they've been a driving force in this project from the beginning, giving their time, their resources and sharing their experience. They have a great passion to see New Brunswick and the gallery thrive and succeed and I am very grateful for their participation. And then finally, I want to thank the McCain family. For the last 20 years, I've been selling advertising, newspaper advertising, to businesses around New Brunswick. And inevitably, once you get through the normal pleasantries uh, and you, know, you finish, you conclude your business, New Brunswickers start telling stories. And I can't count the number of people who've told me Harrison McCain stories over the years. Everybody in New Brunswick has one. He was a giant in Canadian business. He had a huge impact nationally and internationally. But he was one of us, and he had a remarkable impact on the people of the province. This pavilion is the perfect way to honor his memory and his legacy in New Brunswick. The Harrison McCain Pavilion, across the street from our legislature, situated on the banks of the St. John River, is the gateway to one of the finest cultural collections in the country. And aside from his personal passion for the gallery, he, he has a remarkable legacy in this province. He should re be remembered in the company of other great New Brunswick businessmen like James Dunn, Max Aiken, in an institution that they cared for passionately as well. I want to thank Allison McCain and McCain Evans and all their extended families that are with us here today for making this possible. You are a remarkable family. You've built a remarkable business. 
And on behalf of everyone in New Brunswick, I want to thank you for this very, very special gift. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. At this time, I would like to introduce the CEO of the Beaverbrook Art Gallery, Tom Smart. Thank you, Paul. Good afternoon. What a beautiful day. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. As, as Jamie said, we're here this afternoon to honor one of the gallery's most steadfast supporters and friends, Mr. Harrison McCain, and to recognize the tremendous contributions of his wife, Marion McCain, to the growth and development of New Brunswick and Canadian art and artists. This wondrous building was conceived and designed, as you heard, by Shirley Blumberg, Matthew Wilson, and the remarkable Canadian architectural firm KPMB. They've picked up several elements of the architecture of the homes and buildings you see around you in the neighborhoods. This, mil this building is meant to embrace the community, to be fully accessible and startling, and I want to say very warm as well, in its beauty. It's a work of art. And these are the values that Harrison McCain and his wife held very dear. Ces trois dernières années ont été difficiles, alors que nous avons travaillé non seulement à la construction de, de ce pavillon, mais aussi à l'adaptation des difficultés de COVID-19 qui nous ont tous affectés de façon différente. Ladies and gentlemen, it feels so good to be able to gather again as a community in a public space. This is what the Harrison McCain Pavilion is meant to be, a public space where all of the galleries, many communities can come together to learn, to enjoy each other, to sit around the fireplace and share stories, maybe about Mr. McCain, challenge each other and to find common purpose in this incredible art gallery. Nous souhaitons que le pavillon Harrison McCain et l'ensemble du musée des Beaux-Arts Beaverbrook contribuent à la croissance et à la vitalité de Fredericton et du Nouveau-Brunswick et qu'il demeure un élément important du paysage culturel au pays. In addition to the constructing this pavilion, the Beaverbrook Art Gallery has made many other significant changes over the past three years, all with the purpose of making this facility, its art and programming, more accessible to as wide a constituency as possible. The changes to the physical infrastructure have been complemented by an equally com comprehensive project to upgrade the gallery's digital infrastructure. Every work of art has been photographed at very high resolution and entered into a searchable database that will be publicly accessible on our newly designed website. Nous avons aussi changé la marque de l'institution pour refléter notre stratégie visant à la rendre plus ouverte et plus inclusive. Notre nom a été changé en Musée des Beaux-Arts, Beaverbrook Art Gallery. Behind the scenes, we have increased our ability to, to deliver educational and public programs, both at the gallery and in our new education center and online thanks to a powerful new system that will enable us to present our programs in digital formats. You will also see when you go in the building that we have increased the number of exhibition galleries that give us more space in which to exhibit the collections and exhibitions. We've also greatly improved the gallery's mechanical systems, repaired a leaking roof over the vault, upgraded the security system and modernized the systems that help run the business of the gallery. These improvements will enable us to serve you much better than we have ever done through online purchasing, membership renewals, admissions, online purchases, and so on. Tous les nombreux changements ont été mis en place pour assurer la pérennité du Musée des Beaux-Arts Beaverbrook pour la prochaine génération qui souhaite apprécier l'art et la communauté de manière nouvelle et dynamique. 
This transition has been made possible through the extraordinary generosity of several private benefactors, the McCain family, the Government of Canada through the Department of Her Canadian Heritage, the Atlantic Provinces Opportunity Agency, the Province of New Brunswick through the Regional Development Corporation, and the Department of Tourism, Heritage and Culture, and also by the City of Fredericton. I've been blessed and privileged to work with a great staff here at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery and a great board of directors, and I want to thank them deeply and sincerely for making this task, this project, as pleasurable as it can possibly be, as well as challenging. I encourage you to stay connected to the Beaverbrook, buy a membership, encourage your family, friends, and colleagues to purchase a membership, take part in our programming, Come frequently and often to see the wonderful exhibitions and collections that will be on view and which will take place in this space. L'engagement dont vous avez à l'égard du musée et dont vous continuez à faire nous aidera à devenir de plus en plus dynamique, à rejoindre encore plus de communautés et à être aussi accessible que possible à tous les gens du Nouveau-Brunswick et du Canada Atlantique. These values that Harrison and Marion McCain held dear continue to be the cornerstone of the Beaverbrook Art Gallery. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming today. Enjoy the afternoon and enjoy the Musée des Beaux-Arts Beaverbrook Art Gallery. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Harrison McCain's daughter, Ann Evans, to speak to this wonderful initiative. Welcome, everyone. What an exciting day for our beloved New Brunswick. It is my absolute pleasure, on behalf of the Harrison McCain family, to introduce Donald Savoy. As many of you know, Donald holds the Canada Research Chair in Public Administration and Governance at l'Université de Moncton. Among his many accomplishments, he is the author of over 50 books, including one entitled Harrison McCain's Single-Minded Purpose, which I would recommend highly. Donald Savoy was a longtime friend of our father, both were awarded, awarded the Companion of the Order of Canada. Donald could not be here in person, but will be saying some words about our father and mother by audio link. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, everyone. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, when I was invited to say a few words about Harrison McCain and his contribution to our region, I immediately jumped at the opportunity. I am very proud to call him a friend. Every New Brunswicker knows the enormous contributions that Harrison made to our province. He founded McCain's Food and grew the business to a global reach. He, with his brother and their team, did it all from Florenceville. Harrison saw business opportunities when no one else in New Brunswick did. He saw great potential in the frozen food business before others did. He decided there was no better place to pursue his dream than Florenceville. There's a side to Harrison McCain that is much less known, but no less important. I had access to his personal letters and files that were both revealing and spoke to his values and character. Harrison was a deeply generous man, strongly committed to a variety of causes in Atlantic Canada. He gave generously to many, often asking that his identity not be revealed. He preferred to bring attention to the causes, not himself. He gave because he saw a need, not because it would give him visibility. One of the many causes he contributed to was New Brunswick's arts and culture community. There is yet another side to this story. Her name was Marion, his wife, and better known as Billy. She was a determined, gentle soul with a heart of gold. She had a remarkable inner strength. Through, though the daughter of one of New Brunswick's most successful premiers, she always avoided bringing attention to herself. 
la communauté artistique et culturelle de la région lui doit beaucoup. Marion appréciait les arts et comprenait les artistes comme peu d'autres le faisaient alors ou le font de nos jours. Elle savait qu'une société a besoin d'une communauté artistique et culturelle dynamique pour s'épanouir. So here we are today, opening the Harrison McCain Pavilion in one of New Brunswick's most valued gems. People coming into the Beaverbrook Art, Art Gallery will access it through one of Canada's most magnificent entrances of any gallery anywhere. It is a precious gift to New Brunswick and to the arts community. It is only fitting that it will forever bear the name of one of New Brunswick's most accomplished sons, Harrison McCain. Once inside, visitors will soon see the influence of Billy McCain. A gros merci, thank you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Donald. And at this point, I would like to call the curator of the Beaverbrook Art Gallery, John LaRue. Thank you, Paul. Merci à tout le monde. Uh, if art is the bringing of light, it's a perfect day to be here today. So I thank you so deeply for coming. This is wonderful. Uh, shades of 1959, where we, we occupied this, this wonderful street so well. And I, I really want to thank you so much for being here with us today as we open our collections to the world, or what I really should label as your collections. This wonderful celebration event is grand. This new building is monumental. But when it comes down to it, every interaction that you will have with the art today that sits proudly within these walls has a potential to be a deeply sublime and intimate personal experience. If we open ourselves to it, the art can change us each that tiny little bit. It can open our minds just that small amount more. It might encourage a curiosity that we may not have known that we've had. Or it might ignite a passion that we, have may, have, we may have forgotten about for years. I hope that you can be open to those moments of inspiration and awe because we need them now more than ever. C'est un grand plaisir de vous présenter un nombre d'expositions que nous inaugurons officiellement aujourd'hui. Certains artistes de renommée internationale et certains que le Nouveau-Brunswick est leur chez soi. Mais je peux dire sans exagérer que tous les artistes de notre région qui ont une exposition ici avec nous, ils peuvent se débrouiller, débrouiller avec les grands artistes du monde sans ex exception. It's a great pleasure to introduce you to a number of exhibitions that we officially open today. Some of them are known internationally, and some of them call New Brunswick or Atlanta, Canada home. But I can say with no exaggeration that every artist from our region that has an exhibition here today can hold their own with the great artists of the world, bar none. So today, we are proud, of, absolutely. Alors aujourd'hui, nous sommes très fiers d'ouvrir des expositions. So today, we are proud to open Deanna Musgrave, Transcendence. Deanna is one of Canada's most accomplished painters and muralists. Deanna created a custom-designed mural called Transcendence that occupies the entire wall of our 2017 pavilion here next to us, adjacent to our Dali masterpiece. Deanna's work is a powerful creation of beauty, light, and colorful form that is deeply moving. And Deanna, it was an absolute pleasure to work with you on this. Next to it here in, in the, uh, the Harriet Irving Gallery is James Wilson Social Studies. One of the finest portrait and nature photographers of Canada, James Wilson of Hampton created social studies over the past 20 years. The exhibition of 48 large format black and white photographs creates a permanent social record and visual time capsule of who we are at the 21st century. The subjects, ordinary New Brunswickers, they come from all parts of the province and from all walks of life. As a profoundly human record of who we are as a society at this particular moment of time and this particular place, it is a powerful visual document. And I, I strongly encourage you to spend some time with it. And Jamie, it was a great, great privilege to work on this exquisite collection of work with you and the collection in the book, the exhibition. Next, we have Donald Stewart Homage in our pavilion next to Deanna Musgrave. And Homage is a collection of 40 sculptural necklaces that pays tribute to and celebrates exceptional Canadian women. Created by renowned Ontario-based metal artist Donald Stewart, who is an Order of Canada recipient for his work. The necklaces are accompanied by sketches and short biographies, allowing the viewer to explore the personal histories of these exceptional women. It is beyond gorgeous and enlightening. Down in our lower galleries, we have the exhibition Confrontations, Challenging Realities. 
which was, uh, which was curated by our head of uh, programming, Adam Milescu, and as well as her, uh, her colleagues, uh, Denisha, Eliza, and Emily. This exhibition of contemporary and historical artworks from the permanent collection helps us ask questions and open a dialogue to encourage understanding and empathy with subjects and social issues that are not always easy. Art is not always just about hanging pretty things. It has to make us think and look deep within ourselves at times. You will not leave that exhibition unmoved. Next in the middle as you walk in in the orientation gallery, immediately coming through the ramp, you'll see Andrew Steves wood type. And as co-founder of the critically acclaimed publishing house Gasparo Press in Kentville, Nova Scotia, Andrew Steves has forged a reputation as one of Canada's foremost typographers and book designers. And he was born and raised in Moncton, so we can claim him as New Brunswicker. This exhibition of letterpress prints fused contemporary design with traditional tools to explore color, form, and the visual language of wood type. He cares immensely about his craft and about this place, and you will be bowled over by his work. And lastly, down below, in our lower galleries, we have Wabanaki Modern, the artistic legacy of the 1960s Mi'kmaq Indian craftsman. The Mi'kmaq Indian craftsmen at Elsie Bogtog, which was a community formerly known as Big Cove, New Brunswick, they were a major cultural operation during the mid-1960s. Their tapestry weaving, silkscreen printing, wood turning, pottery, and jewelry items were sold by the hundreds of thousands across North America. They were sold internationally, and they even boasted designs on British fine china by Wedgwood, no less. They've been regrettably overlooked for the past few generations, but the studio garnered widespread national fanfare in its time, even being pr uh, presented at Expo 67. This exhibition re-celebrates once again these Mi'kmaq artists and elders who were among the first indigenous modern artists in Canada, and we're privileged to have some of them and these elders and artists with us today. And I want to thank uh, our Indigenous curator, Emma Hassan Sal Perley, for working on that exhibition with me. And lastly, down below in our lower galleries, we have a new two permanent rooms, which I think will absolutely blow you away. One is the Mount Allison room. As you know, Mount Allison is the oldest fine arts department in Canada. And their staff, their faculty, and graduates have transformed the fine arts, visual arts landscape of the country. And so we have that with they're also really featuring a new collection of works that was recently given to us by the family of Mary Pratt. And I know Anne Pratt is here today, so thank you so much, Anne, for your generosity and the family for helping us with that. And next to that, we have the St. John Room, the, the, uh, the visual arts history of St. John from 1930 to 1975, when they were one of the quintessential artistic centers of Canada. And with that, we received a monumental gift of Miller Britton uh, works, 65, in fact, from the Jennifer Britton estate. With that, I want to thank you so much. Merci à vous tout le monde d'être ici. I'm thrilled to have you here. I will be here all day with our guides. Be sh uh, it, it will be one of the great privileges of my life to show you these exhibitions. Come and enjoy your art gallery. C'est votre galerie, c'est votre collection. Et merci de célébrer la culture néo-brunswickoise aujourd'hui. Thank you for celebrating New Brunswick today with us. Have a great day. Thank you, John. <laughs> uh, I appreciate your, your comments and passion for the gallery. Uh, with greetings on behalf of the city of Fredericton, we welcome Mayor Kate Rogers. Kwe, bonjour tout le monde. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fredericton on this beautiful day. The sun is shining, which makes it beautiful, but what, what makes it more, even more beautiful is this space of such magnitude that we are here today to celebrate. And I want to be uh, one of the first to say from the bottom of my heart, congratulations to everyone involved in this project. Con yes. Congratulations to the Beaverbrook Art Gallery on this momentous event. Félicitations à la Galerie d'Art Beaverbrook pour cet événement spécial. We've all waited a very long time for this day, and it is very clear that it was worth the wait. This space is truly breathtaking. And for those of you who've yet to be inside, once you go in those doors, you will feel that. Your breath will be taken away. It's an honor to be with all of you for this uh, grand opening of the Harrison McCain 
pavilion. C'est un tel honneur d'être ici avec vous tous pour l'inauguration du pavilion. Harrison McCain, thank you to gallery director Tom Smart for inviting me to speak at today's event. The Beaverbrook Art Gallery has a very special place in my heart. It was very important for me to be here today when this was all taking place. I want to extend a warm welcome to all of the dignitaries that are here to celebrate this day and to all of you who are sitting out and being part of this with us. It's a delight to be with you. I had the opportunity to visit the gallery while it was under construction earlier this year, and even then, I knew that I was witnessing something of great magnitude. This magical space is a game changer for our city and for our province, and even as I walked through it with a construction hat and there was activity everywhere, you could feel, you could feel the presence of this space. Coming upon it, especially at night, I walked by it last evening and I was I was just overcome with its import. And, and well, we should be overcome because great things are happening in this building. I'm sure that I need not tell any of you that the Beaverbrook Art Gallery holds a world-class collection of magnificent pieces. And while I have always loved this gallery, regardless of its size, and I'm old enough to remember its many different sizes, I feel now it is a world-class space truly deserving of its world-class collection. It's a true gem in our city, host to many renowned and rising artists, local and international artists alike. And within its vast collection, the gallery possesses historic and contemporary pieces reflective of both our diverse provincial and national community and of our world. And I'm sure that those of you who frequent the gallery have many favorite pieces from the collection. I'm also sure that many of you can think back and recall a sublime exhibition or an engaging exhibition or just a really fun event that you took part in. I have many fond memories of numerous activities that I've participated in over the years here at The Bag. And my sense from this incredible space is that there will be many more of that in the future. More so, I'm certain that the gallery and its staff are constantly seeking ways to make this space even more inclusive and accessible and welcoming to all. There is no doubt that the Beaverbrook Art Gallery is a significant economic driver in our city. And that is very important. I say that as your mayor. But it's the gallery's cultural contributions that are of greatest influence. As a leader in the arts in Fredericton and in New Brunswick, the gallery and what takes place within its walls helps open and shape minds. It helps explore concepts and cultures through visual art. And perhaps the Beaverbrook Art Gallery's most valuable contribution and what is made even more possible in this space is how it brings together art and community, two of my greatest passions. Today's ceremony with the Fredericton High School Band, with Indigenous drummers and dancers, and all of you here, this is a perfect example of art and cultural expression being a vehicle, a driver for community building. I'm sure that if Lord Beaverbrook was here today, he would be both impressed and moved by the significance of this space. Lord Beaverbrook gifted this gallery and its substantive collection to the people of New Brunswick, to this provincial capital, and how special it is that we're having this event here today, almost exactly 63 years since the gallery first opened in September 1959. On behalf of my council colleagues and the people of Fredericton, I express sincere gratitude, and I am grateful for the devotion, care, and hard work that, that went into making this day come to fruition. A sincere thank you to the McCain family, to all of the donors, to the staff and the, of the gallery, to the board. Thank you for bringing this to our city. I know that I will be visiting many times and I promise I'll be sending many others this way. Merci à tous d'avoir assisté à l'événement d'aujourd'hui. Une fois encore, Félicitations pour cette grande réussite. 
Thank you everyone for attending today's event and congratulations once again on this illustrious and enormous achievement. Wollewen, merci, thank you. Thank you, Kate. At this moment, I would now like to introduce Tammy Scott Wallace, Minister of Tourism, Culture, and Heritage for the province of New Brunswick. Thank you so much, and I, I'd like to add, um, given the, the, the new exhibits featuring the women, I will proudly say I'm also uh, minister responsible for, for women's equality in the province of New Brunswick, and I have loved those displays, <laughs> so bravo. Good afternoon, bon après-midi. It is a pleasure to be here with you today for this exciting opening event. This is a significant day, absolutely, for our province. I've been here with Tom touring different times uh, during the phases of construction, and he always talked about um, how we were going to feel so much more connected to the legislature, but I truly feel like I'm sitting on the legislature lawn from right here. It is a beautiful feeling, and I feel so closely connected, and I hope that, that all of you can really get that, that feeling, uh, and you will. You'll also feel that when you're inside, and, and this looks like a picture, you know, so, so what a gorgeous concept, what a, an incredible project for all New Brunswickers to enjoy. I would also like to, to acknowledge all the dignitaries here today and extend a thank you to the Beaverbrook Art Gallery for hosting us today. I just saw on the lawn a second ago the speaker of our, of our house, uh, Bill Oliver and his wife Chris, I saw them out there. Um, but certainly this is a very proud day for, for, for me and my colleagues inside that building because this is an incredible uh, incredible view for us every day as well, but it relieves a little bit of, of stress to be able to come over here every now and then and, and unwind. So we're looking forward to this beautiful gallery being open again so we can have that, that place. The Beaverbrook Art Gallery has been enriching life through art since 1959. An iconic New Brunswick institution, the gallery provides the visitor with a one-of-a-kind opportunity to experience both masterworks by famed artists like J.M.W. Turner, while also showcasing amazing New Brunswick talent. And as I was, was sitting here waiting for my uh, turn to talk, I looked out and I saw from my own writing, Sussex area artist Peter Pounding and his wife, author uh, Beth Pounding. So very nice to see so many familiar faces from across the province here today. Indeed, you are all an integral part of this community and our province. All of our artists are so meaningful, and I don't think they've ever meant more to us, really, than after the couple of years that we've had. and. Uh, and, and seeing the offerings that they bring to us to add a little color and joy to our lives. The new fully accessible 10,000 square foot Harrison McCain Pavilion will feature the best of Acadian art while honoring the legacy and generosity of one of the galleries and our province's greatest benefactors. The Department of Tourism, Heritage and Culture shares the Beaverbrook Art Gallery's passion for supporting artists. That is why the province has invested $12.5 million in arts and culture grants, supporting the places, companies, and events within which New Brunswick cr artists create, collaborate, and present. Our government has also invested $700,000 in this gallery's expansion and related work. In addition, we have Canada's oldest public art bank, and we look forward to soon promoting over 109 artists and cultural industries through our Inspired by NB campaign. Make no mistake, we want New Brunswickers to have confidence that they can pursue a rewarding career in the arts here in our province. Les artistes jouent un rôle important dans toutes les collectivités. Je vous invite tous à faire l'expérience de leur travail et à raconter leur histoire à vos amis et votre famille. It is artists who create the face that our province projects to the rest of the world.
My team and I look forward to working with you as we continue to support and promote the many talented artists in New Brunswick and the iconic institutions that co showcase them. Nouvelon que le monde sache qu'ils ont leur place ici. I invite all New Brunswickers to visit the Beaverbrook Art Gallery. This is a place for all of us to feel at home. And on behalf of the Premier of, of our province and my colleagues who work there in that building, congratulations to all the artists, to all the, 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 the volunteers, to Tom and his team, to Mr. Irving and his, and his efforts. This truly is an extraordinary day. Thank you. Enjoy today's celebrations. Thank you, Minister Scott Wallace. Now to celebrate the official opening of the Harrison McCain Pavilion, I now invite the McCain family, Jamie Irving and Tom Smart to cut the ceremonial ribbon. on in.